um, we're going to first hear from John St Stowers. He's uh, coming from Vienna, and he's going to tell us about the robotic operating system. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, we lost a bit of time, so to speed up, would you mind going to the GitHub address? It's got the live demo code I'll go through at the end. So hi, everyone. My name is John Stowers. I'm a postdoc at the Technical University of Vienna, and I'm going to talk to you about how we use the robot operating system to manage and automate our experiments, and how you should too. So in the Straw Lab, um, which is where I work, we perform virtual reality experiments on flying Drosophila, which is a fruit fly. And we do this for the purposes of understanding how the visual system works. So what you see here is a uh, Drosophila um, circled by the red circle under real-time closed-loop control of our system. The fly is being tracked by 10 cameras around the top of the arena and onto the sides. We're projecting a virtual reality, um, which is a cylinder in which, the, also a cylinder, confusingly, in which the Drosophila is trapped. Now, as you can imagine, um, real-time closed-loop behavioral experiments like this require significant computational power. So the first solution might be to take your one process on one computer and distribute it onto n computers, but now you just have n problems. So I'm going to talk to you about how you could use ROS to solve that. Um, and this is a graph um, showing essentially the same depiction which was uh, creating the, the experiment which you previously saw. The first concept is that ROS robot operating system is a graph where nodes in the graph are processes on computers and edges are the communication between the nodes. Don't be too concerned with the details here. Just note that the red circle is the experiment. Everything else is supporting infrastructure in order to run the system in real time. Uh, and the motivation here for us is how can we start and manage such an experiment reliably? Furthermore, we have newcomers to the lab. How can we shield this enormous complexity from them, uh, particularly the less technically competent members? So some of you out there might have heard about ROS, especially if you work in engineering or robotics where it is more well known. Um, ROS is a meta operating system, they like to call it, uh, where um, it contains applications at the top, like um, you know, get me a beer, uh, algorithms at the middle layer, libraries of which they wrap and ship, and at the bottom, uh, a ROS core and even below to operating system services. The reason I call it that is because they have, in fact, reinvented a large part of the OS stack, including package management, dependency resolution, and a build system even. Now, frequent users of open source might be a little bit scared by this, but I'd like to reassure you that ROS is a very healthy ecosystem, a very healthy project that's commercially supported. Um, the not invented here was necessary for their goals, in my opinion, but the point of my talk is to explain that the ROS core at the bottom uh, has nothing specifically to do with robotics. It's a nice, pure Python interface, and its concepts are perfect to use and apply to create reproducible scientific experiments. Functionally, ROS provides four pillars um, you should use to create these reproducible experiments. We have inter-process communication, um, uh, process management, which is uh, the launching and, um, and management of running ROS nodes anywhere on the ROS network, which I should say is just any collection of computers that can communicate. Um, configuration management, which is important for recording the state that your experiment was configured before launching it. Uh, and ROS also has support for saving data um, to disk and to, to analyzing that data later. I will talk about the first three of these and the rest, and in fact even these two, are more clearly demonstrated in a live demo at the end. Um, so. Starting with the first core service, the ROS Interprocess Communication Layer, or ROS IPC. So ROS essentially allows you to distribute a soft real-time system across a strongly typed message bus. So if you recall the graph from the first slide, the edges of that graph represent the interprocess communication between the nodes. Um, and this interprocess communication comes in two forms. Uh, topics, which are stream-like, multiple publisher, multiple subscribers. Uh, and services which are um, synchronous, function call-like, where there is one provider and perhaps multiple callers. Both of these um, IPC messages are described using an intermediate description language. Uh, you can see examples of, um, well, that slide's a bit bright, sorry. Uh, the events there, uh, event.message and command.serve. Essentially, you can see 
the standard types are supported, integers, floating points, etc. And these are reminiscent of C struct definitions. The second and third key pillars of ROS are process and configuration management. Now, process management encompasses launching of ROS nodes on the local machine and on remote machines and interacting with those nodes on the ROS network using command line tools. I'll demo the tools later. It's easier to just see them in a demo. Uh, configuration management is managed by a thing called the parameter server, um, which is a service hosted by the special ROS master process, which I haven't mentioned, but it is necessary to be running somewhere on the network to mediate the discovery and communication, the initial communication between nodes. The ROS parameter server provides values to nodes and allows them to get and set them. So it encapsulates the running state of an experiment or the, the initial state of an experiment. Now let's switch gears slightly to some concepts um, that I will use to show and demonstrate this medium complexity example shortly. So we have here um, a small example of the ROS API. Uh, ROSLib um, is the interface to the bad package manager. Package manager. ROSPy is the Python module that you use for communicating using the IPC. And you can see here we're doing, um, in the first and the second cases, we're creating a publisher and a subscriber, which communicate using topics. So we see these two things are run in two different processes, and they communicate over a, uh, a bus whose name is in, uh, info there. Uh, and these can be started and stopped and managed by the ROS machinery. So essentially, um, the ROSPy API is the only API you would need to use for creating uh, experiments that use ROS from Python. So I'm sure most of you could breeze through the ROS tutorial in quite short time, so I'll instead focus on a medium complexity hypothetical experiment. Now in this assay we think of it as a behavioral conditioning assay. We have a mouse in a cage, um, we apply a stimulus, which might be light, and we record the choice that the mouse makes, this green or this blue box here. We also wish to record experimental metadata, such as the temperature, because that might affect the mouse. Uh, we want to record the video, a video of the mouse um, making the choice. Um, we also want to allow a student to simply change the parameters of the experiment quite easily, so we want to separate the actual apparatus, which is the thing which manages the cage, from the experiment, which, is, which defines the, the hypothesis that we're testing. So we'll, we'll test some hypotheses regarding um, how active are they when we turn on and off light. So immediately you think of this in the ROS mindset as a node communicating with other nodes over messages. And you can see there in the bottom, we have a circular node which defines the assay, which is the cage. It is publishing, which is the out messages, um, several things, events, um, which is, is published any time the, the mouse makes a choice with the two boxes, it's publishing the temperature, and it's publishing images. And it's also waiting for command by the experiment on the stimulate topic. So um, now I'll jump to um, a quick live coding example. I hope that some of you have got the code there, otherwise you'll see it on the screen, just a bit smaller. Yeah, it's um, NZJRS. Yeah, sorry, JRS. Okay. So the first introduction to um, that I mentioned, ROS has a special privileged master that handles mediation. This is called ROS Core. So we'll just start ROS Core in the background. We don't have to care about it. And let's go straight to our experiment. So. Uh, as part of the bad package manager part with the good command line tools part, let's change to the package which I've, uh, which I've created that has these experiments. So we can use a command called rosCD to the scipy package, which is where we are. Now, um, the code looks like, the, for the experiment that I've coded, looks like this. Um, it it's describes the node which I had in the previous slide publishing a few things, subscribing to a stimulus message. So let's go ahead and start that node. Um, so we can do that with a command called ROS run, which runs a node, and it tab completes nicely, run a node in the SciPy package, run our SA node. Now, I'm going to do this, which is special ROS syntax for setting a parameter on that node. Now I'll come back to that later. 
So now um, let's put that in the background. So we now have our node running, which we can see by saying ROS node list. ROS, uh, assay is the name of our wrote node. Ignore ROS out. Um, we can immediately see what that node's doing by using another command line tool called ROS topic, um, which command line completes again. And it just lets you inspect the values of things the node is publishing. So let's inspect the value of the event to see if the mouse is making any choices. Oh, there we go. So we can see it chose reward one, which let's say is the green box. Let's clear that. Now, ROS includes a number of primitives you might have seen in the message definition. Um, one of these it has great support for is image types. And it ships with a lot of tools for things like camera calibration and um, uh, viewing images. So let's go ahead and run one of those. Image. Uh, again, this ignore, ignore this part. So we can see the mouse is there. Okay. Ignore the segmentation fault. <laughs> it's not. It's not my code. Uh, and we can also go ahead and um, plot the value of that. Um, the, let's see what the temperature is. So we can run another ROS tool. Um, ROS run RX tools. X plot. I say slash. Uh. And we can see a little um, matplotlib live plot of the temperature out of the cage. Um. All right, so now we've verified that the experiment, the, the assay is working, we can um, measure what the mouse is doing. Let's uh, start the actual experiment. So, which I've coded up previously. Um, can I have a time? Yeah, I won't show you that. So let's go ahead and start that. Um, so we can now see if we use this other tool We can see that we now have, on the screen, uh, two nodes in the ROS network that are commu in communication over this topic. But that's um, rather boring because that's only two nodes, and I want to talk about parallelizing and, and spanning this out. Let's kill those old nodes. Um, another command. So those nodes are now gone. Um, now, there's another concept I'd like you to introduce, uh, like to talk to you about, but um, if you take a look in that thing, there's a launch file which looks like this. And a launch file describes how to launch a number of nodes over multiple computers, and these param um, statements here indicate the way that those nodes should be configured. So now you can do something like, Ross, launch this time. And it'll go ahead and um, launch all of those nodes at once. Um, you can see we have three uh, cages, three mice, all under communication from the same uh, command of the same experiment. You can also see a new node here called record, which is this special tool called ROSBag, which essentially any message that is passing across the ROS network, it records that and saves that to disk. So it's your first entry point for let's record the state at all times so we always know what the experiment was doing. Creates a bag file, which I'll show you in a second. Um, okay, let's kill that. So that's gone ahead and killed all of those nodes, whether they're on this computer or any other computer. So we see now we have a, um, interestingly, um, a bag file which is annoyingly active. Interesting. All right. Scratch that. Uh, hello, hello. All right. So now we see a bag file, um, 237. Now, this bag file contains all the messages across the network. I don't have too much time to show you that, but I'll show you one tool and you can imagine what you can do with it. 
um, if we do done, which just isn't so bright. Um, so we can see these vertical lines represent, um, these are the topics that were published, the vertical lines represent when a message was seen, and we can do things like replay this in real time, we can inspect you know, what the images from all of the cages were in time, um, we can s go back and collate that with uh, the stimulus that we sent, and we can go and look at all of this data after the fact really easily. <coughs> Must be time close. Okay. So I'll carry on. Okay. I'll skip that. Now, um, the last thing I want to talk about, talk about is some things that we've done at Straw Lab to enable interacting with other partners a little bit easier. Now, I showed you the default storage of bag files, which is really great for interactivity and for um, a quick hello world. Um, we've also created tools to convert that to an HDF5 file, uh, to convert that to an SQL database in real time and to take any ROS package and repackage it as a pure Python package to give to your collaborators. So you can check that out on our GitHub page. Finally, I'd like to conclude with the fact that ROS is a very healthy and vibrant project with a very strong future, even if it has some questionable engineering decisions. Um, and its graph and IPC model maps very well to distributing reliable scientific applications. And finally, um, we're looking for a, a, a bio-neuroinformatician scientific Python hacker guru, so if you want to move to Vienna, um, come, to talk, come talk to me. And quickly, maybe time for one question.